All right, let's get started. Um, so, I don't know. I, I did, did any of you have an eight o'clock this morning? Well, first of all, lucky you. But uh, then I, I taught at eight this morning my real analysis class. And when I get here in the morning, I it's just like actually really beautiful on campus. It's like this crisp morning air, and it's bright out, and it's really pretty. And I got here this morning, and it was pitch black night. Like there was no light on campus when I got here. And I was like, well, this is really weird, but I guess I'll go teach my class. Got out of my class at nine. It's pitch black night, pretty much. There was a little bit of sun in the like northern sky, but not much. So it's pretty crazy. It looks like Dante's Inferno outside or something. And then everybody's wearing masks to boot. So it's kind of like, what is happening? But we're here and we're learning some calculus, <laughs> no matter what. Um, so any qu any questions I can answer for anybody? Yes. If you are, uh, we don't have to answer the whole question, but for question 15, yes. we're, uh, we have this equation and across the y-axis, we're, we're going to, you know, we're rotating around the y-axis. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I probably don't have to do that for you. So if you're the typical formula, right, for surface area is integral A to B of 2 pi F of X square root 1 plus yada, 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 right, DX. And that's assuming a rotation around the X axis. So if they're saying rotate around the Y axis, then all the stuff needs to be Y stuff. So before you start the problem in 15, you need to solve for X. And then, you know, they give you like limits for Y. They say from Y is this to Y is this. Well, that's no good. Those aren't your integral limits because you need to figure out, okay, if, if Y or, well, if X is this, what's Y? If X is this, what's Y? And so then you're good. Those limits into the original equation? Yes. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. 14. I'm trying to remember, did we do? We did 14 on Monday. So, yeah, it's on the video, the whole thing. Yeah, so you can get it off of there. Yeah, for sure. Yes. 32. Thirty-two assigned. Everybody, yeah. okay. Right. Not that you can't ask me one that's not assigned, but um, okay. So y is equal to x to the fourth over eight uh, plus one over four x squared. Um, for one less than or equal to x, less than or equal one less than or equal to x, less than or equal to two, and we want to revolve that around the x-axis. Okay, so our surface area is going to be equal to, well, I guess before I actually start writing down surface area, one thing I could do is I could just take the derivative uh, just so I have that ready to plug in. So what would y prime be? Let's see, I take the derivative and I get x to the cubed over two. And then this is x to the minus two. So if I brought down the negative two, I'd get minus one over two x, let's see, to the negative three. Oh, I'm sorry, but it is to the negative three on top, but it's cute, got ball. Seem good? Okay, so now let's write our surface area. 
formula, we've got integral from one to two of two pi times f of x, which is this one. So that's x to the fourth over eight plus one over four x squared times square root of one plus uh, the derivative, which is this guy, x cubed over two minus one over two x cubed quantity squared dx. Okay, that, and if I were just asking you to set it up, this would be perfect, right? Uh, this would be the answer. But if we're asking to go ahead and compute it now, first thing I would do is let's bring out the constant. And by the way, I could even bring out a little bit of a constant here, couldn't I, if I wanted to. Did I? Let's see, do I feel good about that? Yeah, I do, okay. That's right. I could bring out a one-fourth from this if I really wanted to. I don't know if it really makes that big of a difference, but I could. Um, I guess for now I'll just leave it in. Two pi, integral from one to two. Uh, I still have x to the fourth over eight plus one fourth, one over four x squared. And then over here I need to square what's inside that parentheses. Okay, so the one is still sitting there. Square this out. Uh, what's x cubed over 2 squared? Okay. Yeah, x to the what? Uh, not fifth, fifth sixth. Yeah, because if I square it, it's x cubed times x cubed, which is x to the sixth over four. And then if I, I take two times the first, two times this thing is x cubed, times this thing, the x cubed cancel, and I just get minus one half. Then if I square this one, I get positive one over four x to the sixth. Yes. All right. Now I can combine the one and the negative one half here. And if I do, I'm gonna write this one kind of quickly. I get two pi, integral from one to two, uh, x to the fourth over eight, plus one fourth times x squared. Uh, times the square root of x to the sixth over four plus one half plus one over four x to the sixth dx. And now the question is, does this guy factor? It would be really great if it was a perfect square, right? So let's see if it is. So I get two pi. Uh, integral from 1 to 2 of x to the 4th over 8 plus 1 over 4x squared times the square root. Now, what's the square root of just that first term? Yeah, it's x to the 3rd over 2. And what's the square root of that last term? Yeah, that's one over two x cubed. If I added them together, is that true? So you said that this one squared is this one, and you said that this one squared is this one. So the question is, is one half two times this one times this one? So two times the first is x squared, times this one is positive one half, it's perfect. And so now we can take the square root of that square. So we get 2 pi integral 1 to 2 of x to the fourth over 8 plus 1 over 4x squared times the square root of the square just gives me x cubed over 2 
plus 1 over 2x cubed dx. Now I can multiply out what's inside here. And we get 2 pi. Integral from 1 to 2. And now I need to multiply this out. So I get x to the 4th over 8 times x cubed over 2, which is x to the 7th over 16. x to the 7th over 16. Then I get x to the 4th over 8 times 1 over 2x cubed. So I suppose the x is, they'll just be x to the 4th divided by x cubed is x. And 1 half times 1 eighth is 1 sixteenth. So this is x over 16. Uh, plus, I get x cubed over x squared is an x. And then I get 1 fourth times 1 half is x over 8. And then the last one, 1 over 4x squared times 1 over 2x cubed is 1 8 x to the fifth okay. plus 1 over 8 x to the fifth all of that dx i suppose if i really wanted to i could combine these two right uh, because this is 2x over 16 this is 1x over 16 so those together would be 3x over 16. I'll do it real quick. Why not? So this is, we said, 3x over 16. And then I get plus um, 1 over 8x to the fifth. And now we're ready to take an antiderivative. Okay, two pi. The antiderivative of x to the seventh over 16, I'll bump the power up by one to eight and divide by eight. So I get x to the eighth over, I guess I need to know what 16 times eight. I guess that'd be 80 plus what? Uh, 48, right? 80 plus 48 is what? 128. That seem reasonable. Okay. Uh, the antiderivative here, I'll bump the power up by 1, divide by the new power. So I get 3x squared over 32. And then finally, this one is an x to the minus 5. So we have to think about this for a second. So I bump the power up 1, which is negative 3, and divide by negative 3. So if I divide by negative 3, I get minus 1 over 24 x to the, I bump the power up to, uh, okay, just a second. I feel like I did something wrong. Let me think that. I was thinking this was a 4. So I got x to the negative 5, I bump it up 1 to negative 4, divide by negative 4, and I get 1 over 32x. Evaluated from 1 to 2. All right, now we just need to plug it in. So I still have my 2 pi on the outside, inside, to plug in 2. So what's 2 to the 8? So 2 to the 8, I guess I could do it on my fingers. 2, 4, 8, 2, 16, 32, 64, 128. 2, 56? Yeah, I, get, I agree. So 2, 56 divided by 128. I guess that's otherwise known as 2, but... Uh, we'll leave it like that for now. Plus, uh, 2 squared is 4 times 3 is 12. So 
So I get 12 over 32. And then this one, if I plug in 2, 2 to the 4th is 16. So I get minus 1 over 32 times 16. All right. All of that minus, I plug in 1, and I get 1 over 128. Plug in 1, and I get 3 over 32. And plug in 1, and I get negative 1 over 32. Okay, I'm running out of board space for the people online. So uh, let's see, can we add that all together? Um, that 32 times 16 isn't very nice, is it? Uh, what is that? So, what's that? Can we pull out a 32 out of everything? Yeah, I, I believe that we could. Although this one's so nice already, but it's okay. Uh, so let's play, if we pulled out a 32 from every single guy, then I get 2 over 32, which is 1 over 16, 5 times. This one would become what I pull up. It would be 4, so 256 over 4. This would be plus uh, 12. This would be minus 116. Okay. Minus. Then we pulled out a 32. That's 1 fourth. Plus 3. Minus 1. So that would be another way to look at it, correct? So, but did I do something wrong? Everybody good? Yeah. You're good? Uh, it's okay. If, if I made a mistake, I, I do such things from time to time, but I try not to. Is everything good? Okay. Good. Um, So, I've got this 116.5 times. Now, let's see what we can do with this. Um, so, we've got these fourths, right? Or we, if we wanted to be really ambitious here, we could convert everything to 16s, but I don't know how much I want it. Uh, so, let's see, we've got 12 minus 3 plus 1. So 12 minus 3 is 9, plus 1 is 10. So maybe I'll just start with that. I know I've got 10 sitting there. And that gets rid of this 12, this negative 3, and this positive 1. Okay. So then I've got 256 over 4 minus 1 over 4. Um, okay. So I've got 255. over 4, and then I still have to deal with this minus 116. Very good. So I got 1 over 16 pi. And now if I wanted to, I suppose I could convert everything to 16s. So this would be um, 160 over 16 plus uh, 255 times 4. I suppose it's 1,020 over 16, and then minus 1 over 16. So what do we got here? We've got 1,180 minus 1, so 1,179. 16. Did I do that right? So 1180 minus 1. Yeah. 
and so we get 1,179 pi over 16 squared, uh, which is 160 plus 36, uh, 190, 160 plus 36, 196. What is it? 160 plus 36. Where would I buy it? Uh, no. Because no? you've got to add the 60. So, this side. I'll get there. Just give me one second. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're totally right. I, I was wrong. I should have known that. Uh, 160 plus 6 times 16. I was doing 6 times 6. I don't know why. Which is 60. Yeah, I need to add 60. So I had 196 plus 60 is 256. That sounds much better. Um, and then the question is, is it in lowest form? Um, it looks pretty good. <laughs> I guess I could check it out a little bit more, but this looks pretty close. Any love question? Fractions. What's that? I said I love fractions. You love fractions? Yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, a fun thing, since I don't know that we'll have like infinite problems to work through today, I'll, I'll show you something that I really think is fun. Um, nothing better on a dark, gloomy day than a fun math fact. So here we are. So I, I went and saw this talk by this guy once, and uh, he was really good at mental arithmetic. Okay, and uh, and maybe some of you have even seen him before, but um, he was talking about like squaring numbers, and he says like in school we get pretty good at squaring some numbers, like the little ones, right? Like the single digit ones, typically. But, you know, when you get to 9 times 9, most people would say that's 81, and they'd be correct. And then 10 times 10 is 100. 11 times 11, most people even maybe know that one. What's that one? 121. And then if you go 12 times 12, 144, very good. 13 times 13, 169, very good. And this is when it starts to get a little bit fuzzy for people typically. I don't know why exactly. But when you get to 14 times 14, I don't feel like people are just like, oh, I know that. And maybe you do for 15 times 15. Do you know what that one is? No? Okay. It's okay because you're about to learn a very cool trick. Uh, and that is, so the guy was telling me, remember this uh, nice little factoring theorem uh, from algebra. It's a squared minus b squared. It's like, do you remember factoring using the difference of squares? So the difference of squares says that that should be a plus b times a minus b. Right? That's just the difference of squares. Seem familiar? Okay, so here's the really cool trick. Just add b squared to both sides. When you do, you get that a squared is equal to a plus b times a minus b plus b squared. So, and I can choose the number b to be anything I want to. So, like, let's say that we took something, like, what did I just have to square in my head and failed on? 16. Right? That's really sad to me actually right now, but let's go with it. So 16, I failed. So what I would say is, okay, 16 is close to a number that I'd like to multiply by. What's the closest number to 16 that it's easy for me to multiply by in my head? 10. I like to multiply by 10, right? And so what I'd say is how far is 16 away from 10? Six. So let's choose B to be six. 
So I say, if I'm gonna subtract six, I also need to add six. So what's 16 plus six? 22. What's 22 times 10? 220, but then I need to add six squared, which is 36. So what's 220 plus 36? What's that? 256. Yeah. And so that's how you could do it. But you notice that like, well, that you might be like, well, that's kind of cute. You know that you could do 16. Good for you. Uh, well, let's do something more interesting then. Let's do like 91. So if somebody said, well, what's 91 squared? Basically, you say, well, I better get out my calculator. Right. But I think we could do it. So take 91. What's a number that's close to 91 that I kind of would like to be able to multiply by? 90's okay, but there's even better, 100, right? So how far is 91 away from 100? Nine, so since I'm going forward nine to get to 100, I need to go backward nine to 82, agreed? So 82 times 100 would be 8200. Zero, zero. So 8,200, but then I have to add nine squared. What's nine squared? 81, so 8,281. So 91 squared should be 8,281, which it is. How does it work? Sure. So what I wanna do is I wanna say, what's 91 squared? Right? And so what I say is it's equal to 91 plus 9 times 91 minus 9 plus 9 squared. Okay. So I add 9 to get the 100 in my head because I like to multiply by that. Then I have to subtract 9 and then I add 9 squared. And it's exactly right. And it actually makes it so if you are like motivated, like you could say, okay, two digit numbers, that's easy, right? Like let's do a three digit number. So could you square a three digit number in your head? Uh, so what's a good example of a three digit, let's just take a random something like 123. Okay, so let's take 100. I'll just write down 123 just so we don't forget what we're talking about. So 123 is my number. I don't know if I can do this on the spot, but we'll try. So what would be something that I really like to multiply by? I would say 100. Like I like to multiply by 100, but that's a pretty big jump, 23. What's that? 125 is not bad. Uh, do I like it? I don't know because I don't know if I really want to multiply 125 by 121. Uh, well, like, like 120. 112, maybe. I think I like 100. Okay. Uh, even though it's going to create maybe some problems for me, let's see how bad they are. Um, so 123 is 23 away from 100. But what's 23 on the other side? 146. Agreed? So 146 times 100 is 14600. 14600. That's something I need to remember because now I need to add to 14600 23 squared. Yeah, but what's 23 squared? Well, it's 20 times 26, which is, uh, let's see, 20 times 26 would be 10 times 26, which is 260 times two, which is 520, right? Plus, um, plus nine, uh, so 529. But then what was that original number that I needed to remember? One, I believe, it, was it 14600? And I need to add 500 and 29. Okay, so uh, what would that be? 15129? 
So one five one two nine. Is that right? Okay. I'm not very good at this. I haven't practiced a lot, so I you get to watch me just struggle through it. Uh, but this is really, really good, like mental um, exercise if you're interested. And you could just test yourself. So every once in a while, when I'm like super bored, I'm like, okay, okay, what's 72 squared? And it's just like, yeah, just kind of play with your mind a little bit and see if you can do it in your head. And it's kind of fun. Um, so I like to share little things like this every once in a while. But that one's really fun. So the guy who showed it to me, he said he could do a five digit number in his head. So, and he even made sure that it was like real because he like pointed at five different volunteers in the audience and they each picked a digit in their head. And then he asked for those digits and then that was his starting number. And then he had to square it. It took him a little while, but he also did it out loud, kind of like I was just doing. But what he has to do is because it's hard to remember strings of numbers. Like for me, it was even hard to remember like the 14600 after I was working on the other problem. So he had ways of remembering digits as words. So he could convert like 146 into a word for himself to remember. And then he was able to store that word. So, so he was like, okay, it's boat boy. Okay, boat, boy, boat, boy. And then he'd go do the second part of the problem, and then he'd be like, okay, it was boat, boy. And so then he'd have, it was, and he was just going through all this, like, and letting us listen. And then eventually he'd be like, two, four, six, one, nine, seven, three, five, two. And it was like, oh my gosh, that is messed up. So he, he was really, really good at it, but he had a lot of practice. So pretty fun. Anyway, uh, let's see. Any other questions over uh, surface area? Let's see. Somebody online said, can I do number 20? Yes, I can. Let's see. Let me write it down. Number 20, we have y equals 1 plus square root of 1 minus x squared uh, between the points 1, 1 and square root of 3 over 2, 3 over 2. And we're going about the y axis. Okay, so if we're going to revolve around the y-axis, the first thing that we've got to remember is everything has to be in terms of y. So we're going to integrate from something y to something y with y stuff in the integral dy. And that's important because right now this is written in terms of x. And so we really need to solve for x. So let's see. I guess I have y minus 1 square root of 1 minus x squared. I can take, I can square both sides, so I get y minus 1 quantity squared is equal to 1 minus x squared. I get y minus 1 squared minus 1 equals minus x squared. Uh, this is getting kind of nasty, but I guess, so I get 1 minus y minus 1 quantity squared is x squared, and then finally, x is going to be equal to, I suppose it would be plus or minus the square root, but I'm assuming we're looking at square root 1 minus y minus 1 squared. Okay, so technically, if I take the square root of both sides of this, x is plus or minus this, correct? So what I have to be a little bit careful of is that does like this number actually go in if it's plus or it's minus? 
So if I took like positive one for y and plugged it in here, this is zero. Square root of one is one, not negative one. So I don't have to worry about the negative one that could come out of this because this point doesn't go through. So it's the positive half of the square root that I'm interested in. Does that make sense? So it's not that I'm just skipping that step of putting plus or minus. I can just see that it's not the minus one. Yeah. Oh, never mind. You're good? Okay. So it definitely would be x equals plus or minus the square root, but these points tell me the plus one is the one I'm interested in. All right. By the way, maybe we could do a little bit better than this. Uh, I could square it out. If I do, I get the square root of 1 minus y squared. Then I get 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, negative 2y, positive 2y, plus 2y. And then I get negative 1 squared is 1 times a negative is minus 1. So this turns out being the square root of 2y minus y squared. Okay. Also, I need the derivative, right? So I need to know if that's my x, then what's x prime? Well, I suppose by the chain rule, it's 1 half quantity 2y minus y squared to the negative one half times the derivative of what's inside, which is two minus two y. Another way of writing that though would be two minus two y is on top. On bottom we have two square root of two y minus y squared. And now, if you wanted to, you could cross out all the twos, and this is just one minus y over the square root of two y minus y squared. Okay, so that's the derivative. So I've got my function, I've got my derivative, and now I'm ready to set this thing up. So my surface area is equal to the integral. Now we're integrating from a y value to a y value. So here's a y value, here's a y value. So it's from one to three over two of two pi times uh, my function, which is this square root. So square root of two y minus y squared times the square root of one plus the derivative, which is sitting right here, 1 minus y divided by the square root of 2y minus y squared quantity squared dy. Okay, so if the goal was just to set this thing up, we're all done setting it up. Uh, and now let's do our best to work through this thing. Uh, so I could pull out the 2 pi. If I do, I get 2 pi integral uh, 1 to 3 over 2 square root 2y minus y squared times the square root of 1. And then we'll square this out. On top, I get plus 1 minus 2y plus y squared. And on bottom, I get 2y minus y squared, because I just squared the square root dy. Now we can combine these, get a common denominator, and combine. And we get 2 pi integral 1 to 3 over 2 of square root 2y minus y squared uh, times the square root of 2y minus y squared uh, plus 1 minus 2y plus y squared all over 2y minus y squared dy. 
which is to okay what happens up here we've got a 2y and a minus 2y we've got a minus y squared we've got a positive y squared so all that's left on top is 1 and the square root of 1 is just 1 so let's rewrite some things I get 2 pi integral from 1 to 3 over 2 of square root of 2y minus y squared times on top I just have square root of 1, which is 1. And on bottom, I have the square root of 2y minus y squared, dy. But this is sort of wonderful. These cancel. One's on top, one's on bottom. And I'm just left with 2 pi integral from 1 to 3 over 2 of 1 dy. And I can do that antiderivative. Yes, sir. You're good? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, where did the square root come from on the bottom? Yeah, the whole thing was squared, square, square rooted. And so that's the same thing as the square root of the top divided by the square root of the bottom. So the square root of the top was just the one. The square root of the bottom was just the square root of the bottom. Yeah, okay, so this is equal to two pi. Integral, oh, uh, antiderivative of one is y, evaluated from one to three over two. Now just plug it in and I get two pi times three over two minus one, which is just two pi times one half, which is pi. And that's very pretty. <laughs> so all that work for just a little pi, kind of sad. Um, okay. Where are we at? About five minutes left. Any short questions I can answer, or people feel pretty good about this homework at that this point? Yeah. Let me see. Y equals twelve minus three x. Yeah. So I think that for that one. You should be able to follow just the same technique and get there because the square root, I'm sorry, the derivative is just minus three, right? So minus three squared is just like nine, and then you're adding one. So that other piece over here, this whole section, just turns into like the square root of negative, I'm sorry, the square root of 10 or something. So once that's a constant, you can pull it out of the integral, and then it's really easy. So, oh, like the you didn't like the answer? Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I hear you. Uh, okay. Yes, sir. Say that again. Yes. So, it, yeah, you do have to switch it to the y-axis, so you do have to write it as like y plus 1 divided by 4 yeah. is the function. Yeah. Then take the derivative of that and go from there. The yeah, so it defines it from x equals 1 to x equals 4, so you have to say if x is 1, then y would be 4 minus 1, so 3, right? So that's one of them. And then for the other one, 4 times 4 is 16 minus 1. To 15. Yeah, you got to switch everything over to Y. Yeah. Okay, I think that's a good place to stop for today. On Friday, we will start talking about the homework for physical application section. 
So try to watch that lecture and those example problems before then get a little bit started on your homework, come with some questions over the physical application and that will be good. Uh, have a good day. Yeah, but it's a pretty substantial section actually, so I think we'll be okay. <laughs> Like I said, I think that like seven or eight of the problems, I'll just have you set up the integral and I won't have to work it out at all. But then two or three, I will. Okay. So it's kind of like if all if you're kind of like, well, I can get to the integral, but then integrating it with all the algebra and stuff, that's kind of a mess. Yeah. Kind of like, well, that'll probably be two or three of the problems of the 10 on the exam. And the others will just be like, just set it up, show me you know how to get it to the place where you integrate it. But at the same time, you do need to be able to. Yeah. Do, but it won't be like if you are doing that on your algebra, you're going to fail the exam. That's not the case. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And so for like a problem like the surface area one, uh -huh. like, um, so when you set up the integral, is it going to be like, all the way until before this point or yeah way forever. before so just right when i say like surface area equals integral from a to b to pi f of x you know square root whatever yeah uh, that as soon as i write that first integral that's it we wouldn't even have to like square no 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 there. just put in exactly what the formula says yeah. and you're done okay. so basically i'm just seeing do you understand how to set this integral and okay. then it's kind of like there will be a few where i want to know do you remember how to take an integral yeah like yeah the fundamental theory yeah okay. exactly but it the majority of the test won't be there. okay all right Sounds yeah good. yeah thanks yes sir hi Hello. uh kind of a two-pronged question first do you grade homework on like correctness of the answers or like do you look at it as far as like how we go through the process yeah uh both of those both so of those? if you get it wrong you're not going to get full credit but i will give some partial credit if you kind of have the right idea okay so there is partial credit okay if that's so what you're i turned it turned in the homework for 6.6 .6, like right before i got here i should have okay. waited uh, because i messed up like i got like one number off on one of the problems okay. we did so is there a way to like go back like unsubmit it and then resubmit it or is it just kind of like that's what it is i think you could submit over the top of your assignment over the top of I it i think you can resubmit if you want to okay yeah and if it's before the due date and you resubmit that's fine okay yeah all right thank you yep yeah, yeah. The, the other thing though that like it's like one problem a little bit off isn't really going to affect your grade that much but definitely do it uh, yeah. you're you're certainly welcome to i was going to say it's like those are the easy points that i can yes. make um, for sure so. for sure okay thank you Just stop this. <laughs>